Welcome, citizens, to the ninth episode of the Liberty Critical Research Podcast. Before we begin this episode, I would like to introduce Travis Vengroff, the creator of Liberty, for a special announcement. Hey, everyone. It's Travis here, co-creator and producer of the show. The final episode of the first season of Critical Research is almost upon us, and as such, we're going to have a bloop episode as well as a question and answer episode. So please be sure to send your questions to thelibertycomic at gmail.com so that we can answer your questions and uh, have a more amusing episode than just rambling. You can also post your questions to the Liberty subreddit. I also wanted to send out a quick special thanks to the Imgur community because you guys have been incredibly supportive for the podcast. In addition to your kind words of support, we've also received fan art from Aina O'Neill all the way from Ireland, and even special guest voices like Andrew Spittle, who's the voice of Sexy Dak in this episode. We'd also like to give a quick thanks to Alicia Griffin and ComicCoverage.com for your wonderful articles on Liberty. We've attended a number of conventions this year, and we look forward to seeing you perhaps at Magic City Comic Con in Miami, C2E2 in Chicago, and New York Comic Con. Also, it is with great pleasure that I announce that we've been working diligently to bring to life a comic book set in the Liberty universe called Liberty Deception. While the first volume will not be available until October 2016, we're going to be unveiling a short story called Issue Zero at C2E2 in March. Finally, it is my duty as media producer to inform you that the following story may contain content some listeners may find disturbing. In fact, this episode features nudity. So, stay tuned, and remember, Atreus endures. He's got a point, but there has to be a compromise somewhere. Compromise? We just spent hours, I don't know, days, down there with those things. Cato did not give himself up just so we can continue with this futile mission. So your recommendation is to just let his sacrifice for the mission be in vain? You have no right to say that. You don't know Cato, you fringe-loving traitor. Traitor? You'd best be mindful of your accusations, kid. Oh, really? You were eager to let them take Cato away. Sev, stop. This is not helping any of us. He's gone. Really, no one could spend as much time out in the fringe as he has without losing what makes him Atrian. What? Did you apply for this mission or did they give it to you? I'd say both. You want to be out here. And there's no way the DFR would let you back into civilization. Your claims are baseless. Yes, I did apply for this mission. But only to stop each and every single one of your sorry asses from reaching just the same fate as the Northern Expedition. You want to go back to the inner city? Fine thinking that you have something nice to go back to might just keep you alive long enough to get there. But if you think for one moment I'm going to allow you to give up what we've already accomplished, you are sorely mistaken. Allow? You think you have the authority to allow anything out here? Yeah. Why don't we settle Shut this? it! You think either of you are contributing anything by arguing like this? Yes, Cato is gone. No, we are not turning back. We have a mission to complete, so set yourself straight. Sev, I'm sorry that Cato is gone. But we are still alive. Gradius knew what he was doing. And we all knew what we were doing when we were assigned to this mission. To think we would all survive this would be naive. And what Cato did makes him a hero. Let's make sure we go back to Atreus. Mission completed. So that he is honored as such. Now get suited up. Sev, wake Kofsky. Gradius, where are we? Hey. Pocket Doctor. I'm awake. Uh, just give me a few moments to document the Darkkin symbology here before we move on. We're on the first floor of an abandoned building. It's old, an office-style structure, though it's hard to see that with all the refuse and boarded windows. While I don't know exactly where we are within the fringe, we should be able to discern our location by seeking out the territory of the Shale Gang. They sure seem to like that airway symbol a lot. I know, right? It's fascinating. And I'm starting to think that there might be a correlation between the symbols and the deities from the story. Hmm. Or perhaps figures within their social structure. I most certainly should have asked them. Hmm. It's okay. We all had something else on our minds. Do you agree with my suggested course of action? So we're going to just, what, corner fringers and ask if they know where we can find the big lady? Unless you have a better suggestion, yes. Why don't we visit a brothel? Excuse me? Our interview with the sex worker was most informative, and he suggested that we could gather a far greater wealth of information from his, uh, co-workers. We have Meal, 
so information should be readily available to us. That adds to eight. Good suggestion, Kofsky. <laughs> I never thought I'd say this, but I, um... Let's go find a brothel. What's a brothel even look like? In the northern fringe, the larger ones sometimes have pornographic, uh, symbology outside. <clears throat> outside. If we ask around, I'm confident it won't be difficult to find. Let's gear up. Yeah, Reed, my equipment reeks. There are a bunch of stains on here. I can assure you are not mine. Why is my gun sticky? It's probably... Don't tell me. Don't. I just can't wait for a shower. Yeah. We traveled through the sewer pipes. None of this should surprise you. Ugh. Let's just move on. We have so much to do, and the faster we collect our information, the sooner we can return. You know what I miss? My desk. I had a wonderful little research nook, clean and pristine, and my chair. Reeve, my chair was like sitting in bed. How did they ever think? Oh, you know who would make a good field researcher? Mr. Comfy Chair. My research from that chair was brilliant. If anything, that chair has contributed to science. <laughs> the exit appears to be clear, and the sun should be setting soon. Everyone ready yourselves. We're moving out. Gradius, behind me. Kofsky, follow close to Gradius. Sev, watch our backs. All right, let's go. Contacts at 90. Three scavengers by the look of it. We have a pair at 270. One smaller, one larger. Somewhat distant. Where to, Kofsky? Move towards Sev's contacts. With any luck, they'll have some information. Small individuals with larger ones usually indicates a traitor of some sort, with protection. Great. That means Meal can easily buy us information. Hmm. Jalo, you're moving in military formation again. Oh. Right. <clears throat> you, merchant. What do you want? We looking for a poke. Know where we can find something for all us? Hmm. Penny's place ain't too far. Penny? Yeah, the sack. She has all the clubs nearby. Worth poking around at, at least. You got a meal to trade, right? Yeah. How do we find her club? Eh, back the way you come a bit. Turn the street with a big skull painted on a wall. How big? Big. It's not much to go past that. You'll know Penny's place because it's got a pretty glowing lady up top it. Hmm. Also, uh, tell the folks inside Sexy Dax sent you. <laughs> that you? Nah, it's my dick. <laughs> tell them that, and they'll give you a discount. So don't forget it. Nice. See you around. Maybe. It's so odd. What is, Kosky? This is all so different from what they broadcast in the city. They are not mindless. They have language and beliefs. They hold on to meaning and understanding well enough. And they have multiple established social structures. Don't you dare start saying you like these monsters. I'm not. What I'm saying is that we can despise and fear them for what they truly are. Why all the lies? I'd stop thinking that way, Kofsky, or you might never reach that share of yours again. What? No, I mean... Reed, I don't know. Growing up, the wall represented a separation between civilized Atreus and the monsters beyond. Those gray, deformed ghouls of the broadcaster... Not as we know them. These monsters are, well, people. Or in more clear terms, these people are monsters. You're confusing me, Kofsky, but I agree with the monster part. Do you have a point to this? Why lie? Why not fight the real enemy? Why hide this? Kofsky, you do not fully understand what you are saying, so don't say it. I think I see the skull up ahead, so be quiet before someone hears you. I wonder what they used to paint it. Obviously, it's paint. That's not what... Never mind. So, just guessing here, but I'd assume that is the place up ahead. <clears throat> well, they certainly have a large, realistic depiction of what this building represents. <laughs> good, good. Let's head on home. Keep moving. They're not talking to us. Let me handle the talking. Is that really such a good idea? In the interest of survival, yes. Hmm. What's your trade here, boys? Hoping to trade some meals for a safe place to sleep and maybe a little dance, if you follow. Why so stiff? You got something you're hiding? 
everyone's got something to hide if they got the goods to come here. At least so said sexy Dak. Guess you ain't working for those 7th Street boys if Dak sent you. So we good to walk in? Yeah, but if you're thinking of trying anything dumb, know that we just got a shiny box of extra nice boom pops that'll mess you up. Bad. Nice. I hear ya. Nothing dumb. Almost like the clubs in Atrius. Not been to many clubs, eh, Kofsky? Only with lots more naked ladies. And men. Yep, that one's a guy. Welcome to Penny's Club, fair travelers. What's your desire? We'd like a room to sleep in tonight and some company. Do you like boys, girls, maybe both? Uh... Both would be beneficial. Oh, um... Try to see if we can acquire them one at a time. Both, but uh, we'd like them to visit one at, <clears throat> one at a time. Okay. Do you expect things to get rough? Nah, it's just for me. My guards like to watch us all. No shame in that. We have a healthy assessment for me to choose between. In fact, anyone with a jagged brand on their skin, so long as they don't have the Stark tattoo on them, is yours to pick from. Though the prices are different. What's that one cost? Huh? One meal for the night and an extra meal for the room. Nice. Here you are. The room is up the stairs, first on the left. If you go till sunrise, we'll charge you extra after you're done. Also, if you want someone else, just ring the bell and I'll be up there to help you get your next pick. Nice. Point us to a room and send her up five minutes after. Uh, sure. Follow me. You get any shale here? Huh? Shale. They deal in scrap. I'm not allowed to talk about customers. Ah. This room. Thanks. Where the showers? Back through there. Are you satisfied with the room? Yeah. Okay, I'll tell her to be up soon. All right, Gradius. Here's what you're going to have to ask. Oh, uh, and remember, if they want to keep talking, just let them keep talking. Right. Start with simple things. What it's like working here, what kind of stuff does she see on a regular basis... What was the most recent thing she saw that was disturbing, um, in a non-sexual way? And also in a sexual way. How common is violence in the area? Who is the violence being caused by? What does she usually get paid in? Is meal the most common form of payment? What is of worth here that isn't of worth elsewhere? Uh, who's her boss? <laughs> okay, Kofsky. Who's her boss's boss? Just mouth them to me. But stay quiet. What was the first one again? Something simple. What's it like working here? Thanks. Get in the corner and stay quiet. Uh, this corner's sticky. That corner looks cleaner. Best eyes on Atria. Just shut up and stay quiet. You want me in there or not? Yeah. Yeah, sexy. Walk in. Softness told me your friend liked to watch. So let's give him something to see. <laughs> oh, wait it. I got some questions for you. Uh, don't worry, none. I don't have anything you can catch. That's not what I meant. What's your name, Sexy? Name's Shiny, but Sexy's good. I just want to talk for a bit first. You know, talk waste fun time, right? You get paid either way. So, Shiny, what's it like working around here? Lots of fun. They treat me nice. Sarks, that is. What's nice mean? It's safe. I get to eat. They got showers workers like me can use. The Sarks keep a close watch on patrons, too. One more year, and I'll be a Sark, too. You're not a servant? Yeah. Most of us aren't servants. Why's that? Other places got lots of servants. Sure, but none of them run as well as pennies. Workers got drive. We watch out for ourselves, which is nice for everyone. Servants don't have anything. They don't have reason to take care of themselves. They're a lot of work, which isn't always so nice for everyone. Right, right. So how'd you get here, Shiny? I used to work for a bunch of nuttons called Cold Meal. And the Sarks came in and wiped them out. And it's real nice for me, though. Sarks work as well better. Even with the brand? This brand's my protection. No one's gonna mess with me unless the Sarks let them. Or else. Nice. <clears throat> um, what? Would you see me on a regular basis? <coughs> sure. <coughs> Uh, I mean, what kind of stuff do you see on a regular basics? Basis. Basis. I can't give you names or nothing. How do you mean? Uh, talk me through a normal day for you. Okay. I wake up, eat, shower, clean up, and listen around the club till I get a customer. 
Sometimes there's music, sometimes storytellers. <clears throat> what kind of music? You know, loud stuff, soft stuff, stuff you can dance to. I mean, who makes the music? What instruments do they play? That kind of stuff. Oh, I don't really know much about music. I just know that most nights, it's one or two people. Others, there's a few of them. How so? I just told you I don't really know. One of them plays the strings really nice. Another one has this bone that she's made all hollow, and it's my favorite. Then there are these guys who bang on drums all night. I don't really like it, but some people really seem to. Rougher types. Good drinkers. Sorry I missed music night. Sounded fun. You're always welcome back, handsome. You're friends too. As long as you got the meal. What if we didn't? I mean, we do. No worries, shiny. Just wondering what happens when the meal's no good. Let's see. Penny is a sure sort. Like, sure, you want to poke, but you sure better pay. This boom pop type came in with two of his gang one time, all uppity, saying they got meal for the prettiest workers in the place. Penny knew it. Knew they weren't her sure type. She's a sly one. Scrap, Penny got it all. So she lay down this trap. A trap? How so? I'm getting to it. So Penny sent him up to a room. Tells him the prettiest workers in the house will be up quick. And sure, we go up. I was one of them, you know? The pretty ones. I can believe that, Shiny. Oh well, we go up, and two of the guards come up with us, and there is Penny, straight in the middle. She flaunts us up, makes them want us, and then turns, asking for the meal so they can have their night. I'll let you guess, sexy. The scrappers had none. None. Penny and the guards dragged them, kicking and bashing to the front of the building, hauled them up by their cheap necks right above our sign. Sure, they dangled and kicked for a bit, but after a while, they were just swinging. Once they were dead, Penny took their heads to the metal, and they sat outside for months, worn in of cheap kind. And the bodies? Ah, Penny, she's so nice. She gave them to the street folk. Everyone needs a warm bite now and then. So is meal all you take? What else kind of stuff you get paid with? Why? You thinking a work change, handsome? (laughs) Hmm, I'm not sure you'd be the right type. Well, meals most of the time. But as long as it's worth something in trade, the club will accept it. And we still get our meal every day. One time, I went a whole week and no one, not one, paid in meal. But we bring in good stuff for the place. So we workers are treated nice. I got paid in bullets. Just a few is enough. Casings too, but that's like a whole box's worth. We accept drugs, but we usually just resell them. The place that is, not me. What else? We don't accept meat, no way, to tell if it's clean. And we workers stay clean. We gotta. One time we got paid in real pretty glass. Set up some of the rooms, real pretty like. Alright, today is, uh, tonight is a night. One night after the previous recording, which was also a night. I have good news, though. I recorded a series of long and, at points, strange interviews with four prostitutes which I've recorded under additional supplemental notes, SARC interviews, two through five. We we left our camp this morning in search of subjects to interview for information, and based off of previous interactions, we deemed a brothel the most suitable source of easily monetized information. While tactically the sex workers were not the best informants, they revealed much about French culture and its development. For instance, they have developed musical instruments. Not just percussion, but wind and stringed instruments as well. Also, their idea of currency is very fluid. They have a very clear understanding of what they consider valuable, but this can change depending on a given situation. They believe bullets and even bullet casings to be valuable, and the points, uh, this is going to sound very strange, but at points they believe balls of spun hair to be of incredible worth. Meal is, of course, considered valuable, although they still have a lack of understanding as to what meal actually is, often referring the different flavors by their colors. There are, of course, some things that you'll just have to listen to the interviews for. There are some things Shiny, one of the prostitutes, was talking about that are a little bit more... mm, strange. Some of the more sexual aspects of her job. We were also able to learn slightly more about the social hierarchy of the establishment. The establishment belongs to a larger gang in general, but each section of the gang has its own unique codes and social hierarchy within their respective establishments. Each is a delegate, imbued with power and protected by a larger, overwhelming force if needed. Charity, I'm not sure I would call it that, but giving to others, I don't know how to explain it. They give what they don't want, uh, don't need, to those in even worse situations, but I'm not sure if it is anything akin to charity. 
convenience, perhaps? An easy way to accrue favor while getting rid of waste or trash. <sighs> it's in the report. The last sex worker, uh, actually more of a slave, left us for the night. Most of them were surprised no one slept with them at the beginning, but they were all so talkative that they didn't even seem to remember by the end. I don't know if fringers are ever allowed to share their feelings or talk freely on any kind of regular basis. I suppose that's a fairly important observation from a fairly successful day. Tomorrow morning, uh, perhaps after another shower, we will head out to find more people to interview. Really quick, on the topic of showers, the Sarks have no shortage of cleaning supplies, running hot water, and cold water. <laughs> Well, now we see if I can get a few hours of much-needed rest. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Liberty Podcast. Episode 9 of Liberty Critical Research was written by Caitlin Statz and co-created and produced by Travis Van Groff. The voice of Marta Lukowski is Paul Maya. Decimo Jalo was Lauren Griffin. Severus Jungquist was Travis Van Groff. Gradius Rodriguez was John Hex Carter. Sexy Dak was Andrew Spittle. The Sark Guard was Robert Pitsley. The Waitress was Nikki Holland, and Shiny was Emily Amasquita. Season 1 of Critical Research is mixed by Brandon Strader. The music and sound for this broadcast were recorded and designed by Careless Juja. If you have enjoyed listening to Liberty Critical Research, please rate and review us on iTunes. To support the Liberty Podcast, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash libertypodcast. Liberty is a Fool and Scholar production. This production is copyright 2015 by John Dossinger Publishing, and Liberty is a trademark of Travis Van Gogh. Thank you for listening, and may the Archon watch over you.